In this clip, we'll be creating and editing 2D text. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. I'm just gonna come down here between my merge and my viewer nodes, and I'll hit the tab key, and we'll just type in text to add a basic text node. Now, if I come over here to my text tab and just kind of drop that right in there so we can see it, there's a couple of ways that I can add this text. So one way is just to simply left click and then I can begin typing. So you could see what kind of text box that makes. Now I can also Let's add um, another one in here. This one I'll just kind of hook up the same way. We'll be over here. Clear out that first one. I can left click and create a box. And just to kind of copy that, Control C, Control V, you can see how that edge there is constraining the text to always have to be inside. However, you can see that it is allowed to go down below the edge, so it doesn't just disappear out of the box, um, but you do have the control over making it where you can have it just go to the edge there. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this extra that I added, and notice that whatever I highlight here in the viewer, highlights over here in the message field as well. And this is really useful. Say for instance, that you turn the opacity of your text down. Now you can no longer see it, um, but maybe we want to edit it. So I'll come in here and just delete this part that I don't want. And when my opacity comes back up, you can see the change is reflected here. Now, I think I'd actually like for this to be all caps. So I am going to retype that. and you can kind of see the change there. Now, let's move this down a bit to kind of more over our grassy area. Maybe kind of make that a little bit shorter. And let's also center justify this. So right now that justification is set to left, and you can just change that to center right there. Perfect. And also, let's go in and change the font. So maybe instead of Utopia, we can come in and choose Gotham. Now you'll see that I didn't have to have anything highlighted when I made that change. But if I come in here to my font size, nothing happens because it wants you to actually have the text that you want to edit highlighted because you can change it with these sliders based on individual characters or words, just whatever you have highlighted. So if we want to do the whole thing, we need to highlight all our characters. So this is also a great way that you can animate uh, different properties through here. So maybe our kerning, or rather our tracking, we could kind of squeeze that in really tight. And here at the beginning, I'll just right click and set a key. Then we can go to our last frame and pull that all the way out. And now our tracking is animated over time. So it's gonna kind of stretch out over time. Really cool. Now there's other properties in here also that we can animate or edit. So the kerning, if I have my whole word highlighted here, you'll see the kerning uh, goes away. And that is because kerning is only referring to the space between two letters. So once I click between two letters, kerning opens back up and then we have control there. Tracking is gonna refer to the entire line and the space between all those letters as a whole. We also have our letting, so if we had a couple of lines here, we could change how close those lines of text are top to bottom. Now, you may be wondering, well, how do I change the color? I'm not seeing anything about the color change here. Well, that would be in this tab over here. It's not actually located in the text 
Text tab. So we can change our color simply by clicking this little radial color menu. And the easiest way to pick a color based on probably how you're used to it in After Effects is to use this. It's a little more difficult to do it here because you're using the sliders. We're basically taking red away by doing this. So this color is full green and blue. And that's just a little harder to get used to. Um, but you can use this right here and choose which color you want. So let's say we wanted it to be blue. Now I would just pull this little circle out that was in the middle and the closer I get to blue with that circle, the more saturated it is. The closer I go to the middle, the more that it's going to be desaturated to get closer to white. And that automatically changes the sliders for you. Now you can use these sliders over here to change the temperature, the blue to yellow here, but we also have control over the magenta to green color. And you can see how all those sliders kind of move based on what you're doing with the other one. You also have the ability to make something a little bit darker uh, by going over into this slider here. Really cool. So I think I actually want maybe more of an orange color and maybe a little bit more desaturated kind of right in there. Perfect. So that is how we're going to be able to control creating the text, keying those basic properties like size, tracking, kerning, all of that good stuff, changing the font itself, which the font is listed here. And then the weight of it, if you have multiple weights, is listed over on this side. So you can choose whatever weight you want from the list, if there are multiples. Um, and then again, the color is going to be in its own tab. Now, what if you want to start animating some of these things, like moving it around? Well, that is going to be something you could either do with a transform node that you could place after the text. Um, you would need to be merging the text in and it wouldn't be able to just be in the pipe like this. So the text would need to exist over here, then a transform node, then a merge node. Or you can start using the groups functionality, which you can see has some controls for moving that look really similar to what you'd see in a transform node. So let's go ahead and jump into our next clip where we'll learn how to use this groups tab.